Well, here I am with a uh, good car show television friend, J.P. Vanderbunt. Uh, J.P. has an extraordinary taste in cars and uh, does some amazing work at his shop in uh, Fort Lauderdale. We first met J.P. at the uh, Meisner Park uh, show back in June uh, for Father's Day. And you, at that time, J.P., you brought the, the Vanderbunt 1. That was a 1951 fire truck. Uh, right, and uh, but now we're looking at something really different. What is this? Oh yeah, this is based on a. On, it's built around the engine, which is a Rolls Royce Meteor airplane engine that was also used in, in tanks, and it's a 27 liter V12 Rolls Royce engine. Okay, so like as always, you never go over the top on anything, right? So you, you have an airplane engine for a car. Some people say I'm having too much fun. Might as well suck it to them. <laughs> That's the kind of attitude we're getting used to with JP here. Uh, we're about to hear this thing get fired up in a minute, and uh, I didn't bring my earplugs, but um, I kind of like the sound and the smell of that. It would yeah. be recommended. Yeah, yeah. Um, the car is, uh, like I said before, the car is built around the engine. It's uh, got an old aluminum body. You probably noticed the, the wooden body there, which is done by my friends of uh, CF Boats. Right. Yep. I'll talk a little bit about the, the overall style, which is sort of like a post-industrial grunge kind of a look to it, along with a merger of some beautiful woodworking, just like in the Vanderbunt 1. It looks like you had CF uh, Boatworks. Uh, CF Boatworks, who did the rear to that, they did the rear to this. We actually saw this when this was in construction not long ago, and uh, that was a really cool thing. Fun thing to do. I was going there every day and then say, you know, tweaking things out and bringing parts and, you know, let's do this and let's do that. And, right. and these guys are wonderful in listening and, and doing. Mind you, it helps if I pay them a little bit for yeah, their, yeah, their yeah. work. Of course. Yeah, so they've been good friends with you, but also they've been uh, able to work with you in terms of your design uh, scheme. I know this, uh, uh, it's almost never done. It's always a work in progress, yes. right? I, I, I go on the fly, you know, I don't make my designs, I have it in my head but I don't put it on paper, uh, you know, so we go as we go and things change around and you mold them to your liking, kind of. Like a real artist, like a real artist would. I mentioned before to you how I, I really enjoyed like the sort of the tactile 30s industrial switch gear kind of feel and look to everything. Uh, what inspires all that? I have a, a love for everything that's early teens and 20s and 30s. Uh, the way things were built with pride and honor and, and very mechanical and I, I have some type of bond with it and I like to express that in my works of art. Yeah, and it really does have like a, a very true analog feel with leather and metal and wood in a very digital age and it's a real refreshing thing to see. It's a beautiful, uh, beautiful machine and it's huge. It's like everything else is larger than life. I like big cars. Yeah, yeah. What, is, what do you think that says about you? Oh, I don't know. I, I, I don't think I have a problem with my ego. I don't think that's it. I don't know. I just like big cars. I just think you're larger than life. I think that's what it really is all about, which is a terrific thing. I'm a legend in my own mind. <laughs> it's a longtime friend of Car Show Television. It's J.P. Vanderbunt from Victory Cars in Fort Lauderdale. This is his latest creation. Looks like something out of the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. We're about to hear this thing fire up, and I'll tell you, I can't wait. Let's listen in. Ready for this? Yeah. Coming up on Car Show Television. Hi, I'm John Policella from Margate, Florida. I'm here with my daughter, Alyssa. We're the proud owners of a 1964 Corvair Greenbrier. It's uh, a camper mobile uh, from the dealer, a dealer installed package. And we do a lot of camping in it. We put about 3,000 miles a year. We camp all up and down the east coast of Florida, the state parks. Uh, there are three of us and my daughter sleeps on the front bench seat 
and my wife and I in the back. We received this in a condition that was completely rust free, kind of ironically. The only thing it had wrong with it were door dings from uh, kids leaning bikes against it and uh, the bottom of each wheel was rusted out from dogs and cats peeing on it. Came out of, it's like a barn find story, came out of a carport in the backwoods of Georgia. Uh, took us two years and uh, my wife and I did a majority of the grunt work and my good friend painted it, painted in his garage, base coat, clear coat. When we, when we restored it, we wanted to bring it back to original condition as it, would have, as it would have looked coming out of the factory. A lot of people ask us, did you build the camper package? Did someone else build it? No. It is a dealer-installed Chevrolet option, a very expensive option made to compete with the Volkswagen vans of the day. Uh, the whole history behind this, a lot of people don't realize that this is a Corvair van. They've seen the Corvair cars, but never the uh, vans or the pickups. So this was Chevrolet's answer to the uh, success of the camper package that the Volkswagen had. You know, why Corvairs? Uh, number one reason, I was brought up in a Corvair. I was born in 1962. My parents had a 62 Corvair. I came home from the hospital in a Corvair, so I've been into Corvairs my whole life, believe it or not. Uh, rumor has it my daughter, who was eight, was conceived in this van. When you're driving by and you see everyone pulling out their phones and just snapping a picture, it kind of looks like a Scooby van, and we love Scooby-Doo. Well, the cartoon episode, Scooby, you see Shaggy actually working on the rear engine of a van. You know, this, the cartoon was a mythical machine, uh, whereas the movie was a later edition Chevrolet van. But uh, we've adopted the name Scooby Van just to keep her interested in it. Uh, and like I said, she's really picked up the hobby and she's going to own this one day. I'm here with Gerardo Budetti, and he has an unbelievable 1970 Fiat 500. This thing looks like a cartoon character. I love it. Tell us about this awesome car. Well, this car it was made in Italy in 1970, and what happened is car it made it all over Europe. It's unbreakable, and it's very dependable, and today, 43 years old, it's still running, and they only need a very low maintenance. And you can fit up to three, four people. It's a great car. You get a lot of attention, and it's a cute. It's really cute. It's got a great look to it. Uh, I know a lot of people, well, I mean, Fiat has taken the, the looks of this for their new cars, and it, this was the first original, like, city car, wasn't it? T two cylinder? Yeah, two cylinder. You to get about 75 miles per gallon. The most you can go on the highway is 70 miles per hour. But it's a very easy to park, you can move, and it's easy maintenance, which costs almost nothing, and you can get a collector insurance. I bet uh, a lot of people uh, wave at you when you drive by, and you get a lot of looks and that type of thing, right? Absolutely. If I get a dollar each picture, I would have been a millionaire by now. Everybody take a picture of the car. It's amazing the way it's doing the things. What is the first thing that they think it is, do you think? They think it's like a toy, but really it's not a toy. In Italy, we use it for work, uh, uh, driver. You can go anywhere. I'm six foot five, 265 pounds. I'm gonna try to get into the 1970 Fiat 500. Watch. No problem. Have you guys ever watched the Flintstones? You remember when Dino and Bam Bam, or I think it was Dino, the dog, the dinosaur, would have his head out the window? That's kind of what I feel like right now. The strange thing is, there's actually a lot of room inside here. It's just not tall enough for me, that's all. But this is a great car. He's got the Abarth wheel and uh, a beautiful construction in here. It's just a very simple, beautiful car. I just have to crouch down a little bit, like this. See, now I can drive it no problem, like a low rider. It's a beautiful car. It's in great shape. And uh, thanks for telling us about this awesome Fiat 500. Thank you.
Legend. Guys, it's January and we're here on Flagler Drive in beautiful West Palm Beach and that can only mean one thing and that is that it's Supercar Week. It's the last day, we got tons of awesome cars and we're going to bring them to you right now on Car Show Television. I'm Ken Baker with Car Show Television. We're bringing you this series on how to buy a classic car. As we drive around Florida and we go to different car show events, people approach us all the time and ask us, how do I buy a classic car? It can be quite an intimidating process if you don't know what to do. I've spent 30 years in the classic car business. I'm a judge at several different car shows, help run different car shows, have worked with many different manufacturers, and run my own successful business in buying and selling classic cars. I know how to do this, and what I want to do in this series is help people who are novices and beginners into the hobby on how to buy a classic car. We're going to take you step by step on how to buy a classic car, and how to make it a very enjoyable experience. In this segment, we're going to talk about the first step on how to buy a classic car. Classic cars don't necessarily mean a very expensive car. There are cars that are classic cars that are $10,000, and there are cars that are multi-million dollar cars. The key to classic cars is anybody can buy one. It doesn't matter what your economic situation is. If you have the passion and you want one, you can buy one. So what's the first step in buying one? The first step is establish your budget. You want to have fun with this, this is a hobby. You're going to drive your regular everyday car that fits your needs. But what you're going to do in your classic car is you want to have something that excites your passion. So the first thing is, let's establish a budget. Once you know what you can comfortably afford with that car, then what you're going to do is start to look for the best car that fits within your given budget. Okay, so establishing your budget is the first step in picking your classic car. Once you've done that, then we can move on to the next step. I'm Ken Baker with Car Show Television. We hope you enjoy this. We'll see you next time. Welcome, my name is Louis Narum with Four Kids in Aid. This is a nonprofit char charity build that we're doing here. This is the 89 Batmobile. Once it gets completed, it'll be making the rounds at our local children's hospitals, and it'll also be made available to our local Make-A-Wish Foundation. So when you have a, a sick child that wants to be Batman or be Bat Kid, we'll be able to make that happen with your help. Hello, I'm Matthew from McLaren Tampa Bay. We're here at the uh, Palm Beach Supercar Week. I'm here with the 2014 McLaren MP4 12C Spider. This is McLaren Orange, uh, celebrating 50 years this year. Um, this is the limited edition, making 50 of this particular one. No difference in performance, but a very special front end on this car. Uh, still 616 horsepower. Um, on just over 3,000 pounds, as you can imagine, quite a car. Around three seconds to 60 miles an hour, but six seconds to 100 is where she really separates herself from the rest of the cars here today. Uh, 1.7 Gs uh, on the racetrack is really different. Um, where a car normally starts to feel light, the McLaren is laughing at you. Um, but 1 G, you're barely 60% of what the car can do, and that's the big difference here. When you're not doing 10 tenths on the track, driving it down Flagler here at 50 miles an hour, there's nothing quite like it. Um, our average buyer is generally a, a, an exotic owner already, a real car connoisseur to know this brand, uh, a true Formula One heritage going back 50 years. Um, more wins than any other team in racing and just uh, 
uh, a fascinating car. The ride is unique. Uh, hydraulic suspension with no sway bars. Only car on the market today with no sway bars. So the car will sit still and the hydraulics move up and down. Every third of a second she makes an adjustment. So a really uh, just a wonderful machine. My name is Matt Lundy, I'm from West Palm Beach, Florida. Our, our uh, business is Performance Power Racing. Uh, this behind us is a Ford GT supercar. Uh, we started this build three and a half years ago. Uh, Johnny purchased this car locally and said, I want to make this the fastest car in the world. Um, six months later, we had had a, a platform to start with. A year later, we set our first record. A year and a half later, we set our second record at 252. Um, from there, we started doing uh, testing on the car and aerodynamic work, and we now have a Guinness Book World Record for the fastest street legal car in the world in a mile uh, at 283 miles an hour. You can compare it to is a, a ride, a ride at uh, Busch Gardens called Shikra. It's the it's the highest G pulling ride there, and it's about half of what this is at at 100. Um, to give you an idea, the car does uh, one mile, 283 miles an hour in 24 seconds and um, it accelerates from 100 to 250 in nine seconds. So it's, it's pretty unreal. My name is Hugh Bate, I'm the president of Chariots of Palm Beach, and we're the Morgan dealer for uh, South Florida. This is a 2013 Morgan three-wheeler. This is a car that harks back to um, cars they used to build in the 30s. Morgan is a privately held sports car firm in England. They've been building cars for over 100 years. And this car uses a motorcycle engine up at the front, as you can see. It's like a Harley engine. It's actually built by a company called S&S here in the United States. And this drives through a transmission from a Mazda MX-5 or Miata. Um, it's super lightweight, very powerful for the engine. It's a two liter twin and produces performance in the region of four seconds, naught to 60. You probably wouldn't want to drive much over 100 because the, be, the airflow would bat you all over the place, but it's a really wonderful, entertaining car. The nice thing about it is you can use it and really stay pretty much within the speed limits but have an awful lot of fun. Obviously, it's not super practical for a daily driver, but for somebody to use on a Sunday or to have fun in the evenings, it's a, it's a wonderful, evocative machine. Yes, they started, as I said, over 100 years ago. Uh, by, let's see, the great-grandfather of the current president. Um, really a classic com company. Um, they've held on to their traditional values in terms of how they build their cars. They use, still use wood, for instance, in the framing of the bodywork, which is all done in alloy or aluminum. Um, they, use, they use very old techniques and classic craftsmanship skills combined with some modern technology. And that's typically more in the road cars, the four-wheel cars that we don't have here today. Uh, but they're a very unique company, privately held. Um, they still have employees who are second and third generation real craftsmen who produce some beautifully wonderful classic cars.